Hey there, performance management students. Steve Willis here. In this video, I'm going to help you pass your ACCA PM exam. We're going to look at the topic of evaluating the performance of a company. This type of question comes up in section C all of the time, and there is a specific approach that you need to get a pass. I'll show you that approach in this video. So let's jump in and get started. I have a question open on my screen. This is an oldie, this is a goodie, this is an archetype. This is the question ties only. As you can see, there is a story, and this is a section C type of question. Okay, so this is a long form or a constructed response question. Let me give you a spoiler right now. You'll need to read this scenario carefully because you will not get any marks in your analysis of performance unless you are linking your discussion to the circumstances of this company. Okay, so it's going to be really important to read and take notes. Now, before we do that, let's jump down to the requirement and see what we're looking at. We're going to look at part A. Assess the financial performance of the business during the first two quarters using only the data in table one. We see 12 marks for that. Now, if we jump down to part C, we get another table of information. And here they want us to comment on the non-financial data. And this part is worth nine marks. Guys, this type of question is often misunderstood. They're not testing your ability to calculate a whole ton of ratios. They trust that you can do that. You did that in MA and FA. What you need to do is evaluate performance. Can you use these figures okay, to make a judgment about the company? Are they doing well? Are they doing badly? How does the future look? So you'll get marks not only from performing calculations, but most importantly, from crafting short paragraphs that are assessing the performance of the company. And from the financial perspective, you usually see that the company is doing fine, no major issues on the horizon. However, when we look at the non-financial data, we will see that there are big problems that threaten the future growth of the company, as here we're looking at the drivers of the future success of this company. All right, the first thing to do, find the number of marks. I want you to visualize there's a human being at the other end of this with a checklist. They're trying to give you 12 marks to help you pass. So you've got to present your work in a manner that will make this guy or this gal's job easy. And I want you to remember there will be some split of marks between the assessment and the calculations. Now, Without any other clues, I want you to do this. You find the number of marks, you split it in half. Six and six. That's a rough indication of the amount of work that you're going to do. That means you're going to do six workings. Okay? Then you will write up six little paragraphs. If they had given you a clue about the number of marks available for the workings, say four marks are available for the workings, then you would give the marking team four sections for the workings and you would spend more time on the paragraphs. The next thing that we can learn from the number of marks is an indication of how much time we should spend here. I would like you to spend 1.7 minutes per mark. So that's about 20 minutes for part A, okay? Now, before I take you through this, why don't you pause the video here? Why don't you set the clock for 20 minutes? Read the story, what's happening here? It's a tragedy. No, I'm kidding, it's a fine story. And try this question, then I'll take you through my approach, okay? So I'll see you on the other side. Welcome back, guys. Let me show you how I would do this question. 
Well, I'm in the word processor, and that's because when this has been examined in the past, they give you the word processor. That's a clue that the writing is just as important, if not more important, than the calculations. So, I will have the word processor on the right, and you'd be able to see that question on the left. So you can take notes, you can, you can see the figures for your workings as you go. Now, as we said before, 12 marks divided by 2, 6 workings, 6 little paragraphs. And I will use the table tool to get organized here. I'll make a table, 4 columns by eight or nine rows. I might not use all of them, but there they are for backup. And I will use this standard table layout for any evaluation of performance type of question. Now, the first column will be measure. Second column will be working. Third column will be result. Fourth column will be discussion. That's a standard layout that will get you out of trouble in any performance management question. So now I'm looking at the figures in the question and I am going to decide what measures I'll use to evaluate performance. And I think change in sales is a nice starting place. The top line. Then I'm going to look at the change in the gross margin. Okay. And that admin expense has jumped considerably. I'm going to check that one out. The launch marketing is interesting. Let's do that one. Change in distribution costs. and the change in the net margin. All right, I've identified six metrics. I could keep going, but I'm gonna stop here. The risk is that you will overcalculate and underwrite. Now, if you look in the model solutions of this, they, they calculate every single line often in, in the table that's presented. I don't think you have time to do that. Okay, so start with 6, because 12 divided by 2 is 6. Now, let's set up the workings. For the gross margin, we need two quarters, don't we? And then we need to look at the change. Okay, team, so that's the first step, setting up your workings. Now, you might be tempted to skip this. However, get in the habit of showing your workings because if you have an error, you can get partial credit if the marking team can follow what you are doing. Okay, so get in the habit of showing your workings. So I have completed the step of showing my workings. Now, this is important. If you have an error, you might get partial credit. If the marking team can follow what you're doing, you can get partial credit, and everything you do with that number would be assumed correct. That's called the own figure rule, and that only happens when the marking team can see your workings. So get in the habit now of doing that. Okay, now that we have the workings down, we can do the calculations. So I'll do those quickly on my calculator. Okay, team, I've completed the third step of doing the math. Very important, you need to show your work in relative terms. Show your work as a percentage change, not as an absolute figure in percentage points. Okay, if you do it in percentage points, you will not get the marks. They want to see the relative change. That's how we can really assess the impact 
of going from year one to year two, quarter one to quarter two. So the marking team will go through your work and they'll give you one half of a mark for each simple calculation. I see 10 working spheres, so I'm confident I'll scoop up five marks. Now, it's important not to go over the 50% mark. If they don't tell you what percentage of the marks are available for the calculations, you could use 50% as a rough guide. But if they tell you something like 30%, okay, then cap your workings uh, respectively and focus on the writing. Okay, moving on to the last part, the discussion. This is the part that gives people the most trouble. Check this out. Look at what I did. I just rewrote in words what I calculated. Do you think that's going to get a mark? Guys, no marks for stating in words what your figures say. So never do that. Now, you might be tempted to say this. This is a good sign and leave it at that. Guys, don't do that. That's too generic. You need to link it to the story, okay? And every student's going to do it differently. So don't worry if your answer is a little bit different from what you see in the solution in the back of your book, okay? Let me show you what I might do. I'm still going to start with that because I want to tell the marker what the implication of that figure is. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? So that's the starting place. So they're interested to continue reading. This is an excellent sign. It looks like their investment in launch marketing has paid off as demand is rapidly increasing. Guys, I linked it to the scenario. That's gonna trigger the mark, linking the statement to the scenario, saying how something happened or why something happened or linking it to another figure. Let's move on to the next one. This is a concern. This shows that costs are rising faster than prices. Maybe the FX rate moved unfavorably, so cost of sales has increased. Now, if we have more to say, use a linking word. <clears throat> or maybe ties only dropped their prices to stimulate demand driving the 62% increase above. Guys, there we have a very well developed uh, section. So that's gonna be good for at least one mark, hopefully two marks. Let's move down to the increase in admin costs. Now, admin costs are usually fixed costs. Make sure you say this. This is a concern. Admin costs are usually fixed. Maybe the owners took their salary increase early. Okay, notice that everything that I write is linked to the story that was in the second paragraph when they mentioned that the owners were going to hold off on taking big salaries. So maybe they broke their promise. It could be innocent as well, though. Or maybe they hired more staff in anticipation of more sales. Increase in fixed costs. Okay, so it could be innocent. Look at that. Again, very well developed assessment of performance. This is expected. Launch marketing is a startup cost, so we expect it to be dropping off. You don't have to say as much as we did above every time. If there's nothing more to say, there's nothing more to say. However, every time we write about a figure, we are saying how it happened or why it happened or linking it to another figure in the table. Distribution costs. This is normal. Distribution are variable and it's, it's, it's essentially the same as sales. It's an internet business, so everything is shipped.
This is also expected. Distribution costs are variable, so we expect this to follow the change in sales for a 100% internet business when all sales are shipped. Okay, so again, linked to the story. This is a good sign. It shows their losses decreased drastically over the first quarter. At this rate, they should be in profits next quarter. I think it's also interesting if they had amortized the startup costs, okay, for example, the web development costs, then they'd already be in profit. Okay, so we could mention that if we had time as well. Now, when the verb is assess performance, there's often a mark available for an overall comment. So let's just tie everything together, no pun intended ties only, with a general overall comment. Overall, ties only is off to a good start. It looks like their business model is working with the rapid growth, and they should be in profits shortly as they achieve more economies of scale. Guys, we have a very well-developed answer here. Look at this. We used a table to organize our work. We used the columns to lay out what we're going to do. We used the rows to label, to lay out how much work we should give the marking team. Okay, and we said for 12 marks, we split it 50-50, six workings. We did that. So that came to about 10 calculations. We should be good for five marks with the numbers. And then each of these little paragraphs that, that we've written up, we are assessing performance. We're saying something is good or bad. That's an important part of assessment. Then we're saying why it happened, how it happened. And we're linking to the evidence in the story. Guys, we're looking at a very comfortable pass here. Make sure you use this approach. If you get any assess the performance of a company type of question. And in part C, you would use the same approach. You would do the calculations on the other table. And when things don't look good, you're going to tell the marketing team that. There you have it, evaluating performance. Guys, this is Steve signing out. I want to wish you good luck on your upcoming PM exam.